day <clears throat> 42, living with cancer. Um, busy day today, really. Went to Shrewsbury, spoke to my specialist. Um, I went to the Lyndon Davis Centre, which is the chemotherapy, radiotherapy treatment centre. Um, early start to be there for eight this morning, so it was an early start. Um, we had chat with the doc with my specialist, uh, which was basically to discuss my chemotherapy, when my chemotherapy starts, what my chemotherapy is, how long it lasts for, what they hope to achieve. Um, one thing that my uh, surgeon did say, or my specialist did say, these are what caused my bladder cancer. He's under, you know, didn't smoke. He said I wouldn't have probably got it. All the toxins and stuff off these. This is what he said. Go through your body, go to your kidneys, get processed through your kidneys, through your bladder. So, you know, all the additives to cigarettes have not helped me in one bit. I've, um, Nose, me still smoking. I am cut down. I've cut down a considerable amount, but I haven't stopped yet. Um, my treatment, I'm going to be on a. It's hard to pronounce it. Ducitabine ju, and cisplatin, or cisplatin, which is treatment for a number of different type of cancers. I've got obviously a massive document all about it. I had to sign an agreement to Systemic Anti-Cancer Therapy, or SACT, which, yeah, signs, you know, there's no, there's no point me not signing it. If I want to get well, I need these treatments. Um, it's called GC for short, and I said how it works. It said these chemotherapy drugs destroy quick dividing cells such as cancer shell cells. Looks like I'll be having a having it intravenously, so in my arm. Hopefully, I don't really want what they call a central line, which goes into your chest. I don't really want that. Um, they're looking at roughly three cycles, possibly four, dependent on because they are now in contact with Stoke, so it's dependent on what Stoke, you know, they, when they can fit me in. Hopefully. They're looking at once my chemo finishes, I've got six weeks, then I get back to get my surgery done. If there's a delay, then they could give me a fourth treatment. Now, my treatments are over a 21 day cycle, and I have a treatment on day one and a treatment on day eight. Treatment on day one is what they call the long treatment, which is six, seven, maybe even eight hours of chemo. Um, I don't really know. I can't. I'll, I'll video it. You know, I'll show me chemo and whatever going in. But I don't. Until I have it, I don't really know what I'm what I'm in for until I do it. The second treatment on day eight is. I just suppose it's a top up. Really, it's less than the first one. So I shouldn't be there all day. <clears throat> but it tells me here, like say day one, it says you have gemcitabine as a drip into your bloodstream over thirty minutes. They're talking about things like flushing, yeah, flushing things, I have to flush things through, I don't know what they are yet. And then it says that I have cis, cisplatin as a drip in my bloodstream over one to four hours. Well, they're on about a long day, so mine will probably be the four hours there. And then days two to seven is, it says no treats, basically. Then it do its job, then it work through my system and killing the cancer cells. Day eight, I've got the... Jim Citabine is a drip in my bloodstream over 30 minutes. And then day eight, again, it says um, bladder and bile duct cancer only. Well, I've got bladder cancer. So I have cyst cisplatin as a drip in my bloodstream over 30 minutes as well. So again, it's about an hour or so of those two, which are topping up from the ones I had seven days before. And then nine to 21 is new, no treatment, is what they call recovery, really. Um, it then starts again on day 22, which goes back to then day one, which is a long day, day eight, which is the short day, day nine to 21, recovery. 
cycle three, same again. Um, I have to have blood tests before and during my treatment. They were, like obviously the blood tests and stuff before is to see, I, I think it's a base level where my level is, bloods and white blood cells, things like that. And then it's to check the level of my blood cells and other substances in the blood. It also checks how well my liver and kidneys are working. Well, obviously I've got a cyst on the one kidney, but I really am hoping that that's not going to affect it. Um, I hope not. Now comes the list of side effects. Which it says here, like how often and how severe the side effects are can vary from person to person. It also depends if I'm having any other treatments. I need to contact my team if I have severe side effects. My side effects aren't getting better or they're getting worse. Obviously the biggest issue there is um, infection. Because my immune system would be low. My immune system would be at zero. I would be low. I'll have no immune system. So obviously I need to be careful there of picking anything up. So as you can quite imagine I won't be seeing anybody when I'm on chemo. The furthest I'll go is when I have to go for chemo and then I come back home. I won't be going out. I won't be going to You know, I won't be popping into work to see everybody, I won't be going anywhere because I can't risk catching anything at all, <laughs> nothing, even a cold, you know. Um, sepsis is obviously a huge issue, so that's temperature based, again if my temperature is, it says here if it's above 37.5 or below 36, again that's a possible sign of sepsis, so I need to keep an eye on my temperatures and stuff. You've got common side effects, which they have happened to more than 10 in 100 people, so it's more than 10%. And I may have one or more, and it includes increased recent, uh, risk of infection, um, bruising, bleeding gums and nosebleeds, breathless, looking pale, changes to my hearing, which I didn't know. That's, that's strange. It's like high pitched noises, which you won't be able to hear. Um, tinnitus as well, there's a possibility, it might as it is they said, but that if I did have any of the hearing symptoms it may not come back, my full hearing. Um, low levels of sodium in my blood, feeling or being sick, um, changes to my liver, which it says it usually goes normal once the treatment's finished, but again that's what we check on the blood tests. Um, skin problems, skin rash, dry skin itching which again normally goes back, there's a risk of hair thinning or hair loss. It's not guaranteed, it's not 100%, but I'll be surprised, to be fair. Blood and protein in the urine, flu-like symptoms, change in taste, uh, swelling of the face, hands and feet, which I really hope not, because I've got hereditary angioedema anyway, so I don't really need something more, but everything I've spoke, people I've spoke to on a, a page AE forum I go on, everybody there said with chemotherapy they've never had an issue. So I'm hoping it's the same for me. High temperatures, fever, um, kidney changes, but again blood tests for that. Then you have occasional side effects which is anything between 1 and 10 out of every 100, so again between 1 and 10% on that. Blood clots is one. Heart problems, slow, fast, and regular heartbeats, uh, loss of appetite, uh, sore mouth and ulcers, headaches, drowsiness, problems sleeping, inflammation of the lining of the nose, uh, coughing, diarrhea, or constipation, high levels of bill rubin in your blood. I don't know what that is, but again, you get checked for that. Sweating, back or muscle pain, tired and weakness. See a serious risk reaction to infection, sepsis is the biggest cause, the biggest one to watch out for. Shivering and shaking, numbness and tingling, and the rare, rare side effects you have, which is fewer than 1%, 1 in 100. Um, allergic reaction, skin rashes, changes in the lungs, scarring of the air sacs of the lungs, wheezing, uh, blood clots in the kidneys. Um, Acute leukemia is a side effect. Uh, low levels of magnesium in your blood, changes in the brain that are, they say, are reversible. Seizures, leaking of fluid and proteins out of the blood vessels. I say these are the rare side effects, so it's like one in a hundred. Um, obviously, I mean, the side effects I've also got the 
be anti sickness pills, things like that. And I've, I've now got obviously I've got a a direct. 24 hour phone line if I need to uh, discuss anything. I've also got what they call a blue card, which if at the worst case I have got sepsis and I get blue lighted to the hospital, I haven't got to wait. I can just show them this blue card and it says that I'm on chemotherapy and my immune system is at zero and I need uh, antibiotics. And I would say there'd probably be uh, injection antibiotics. Have them put straight in. Um, so yeah, there's you know there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that you know is going to change with the chemotherapy. But again, chemotherapy needs to be done. You know, it needs to. I need it done, regardless of the side effects and whatever. At the end of the day, the side effects aren't going to last forever. You know, they're um, they're temporary whilst I have the chemo. I don't feel, you know, I'm not um, nervous, really. I'm not stressing out over it. I've been preparing myself for chemotherapy since they diagnosed me with cancer, so obviously, you know, yeah, I knew this was coming eventually. I am glad that it's... I was told, to be fair as well, it was told as anywhere between the next two to three weeks I start my chemo. I had a phone call this afternoon off the hospital. My chemo starts on the 11th of May, so it's a week on Thursday. So my chemo is quick. It's not two to three weeks. It's a week, really, just over a week. Um, I'll show it. I'll show people the chemo. I'll show what it looks like. I'll show it. I'll show you the worst side of it if I get any of the worst things. To be honest, I'll describe it. You know, there's taste things, loss of taste, different things, metallic taste. Things taste different. You know, there might be some days where I'm just not well enough to do it, but I'll try and get somebody to video me. You know, I might be a bit grumpy that day as well, but you know, I'll show that. I'll show people what the side effects of this disease are. Unfortunately, if everything my doctor said is true, it's a disease that I've brought on myself. I've not helped myself with 40 years of smoking. Heavy smoking at that as well. It's not even just the occasional. It's heavy smoking. I'm a heavy, heavy smoker. You know, I've smoked a lot for a lot of majority of my life. If that is true, it is my own fault. Of course it is. I can't blame anybody else for it. No one's made me smoke. No one's forced me to smoke. No one's kept me smoking. That's down to me. That's my own choice. You know, again, there's the, like I said on the previous video, there's that nonchalant arrogantness of, ah, well. If it does happen, blah blah blah. Oh, it won't happen to me. Oh, there's plenty of people that yeah, there's plenty of people that have smoked the whole life and had no issues. There's plenty of people that've never smoked in the life that have had issues. But the risks to your body from smoking with cancer is is huge. You know, it's not rocket science. You know, we're not in an age of stupidity where we don't have information literally at the push of a button now it's on your phone everybody pretty much has got a phone just click a button it's there if you want the information most of us don't want to read the information most of us don't ever believe this will happen to us either so you know why would you read something that you wouldn't think is going to happen to you um my head's in a better space now than it was on the last video i mean i was i was down as well i could hear it in my voice it really was down and just everything about me, I just wasn't myself. I'm pretty much back on form again now. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not moping about stuff now. I've accepted that what my surgery is is what my surgery is. I'm not, you know, I just have to face facts. That's what it is going to be. That's what they're going to remove. And, you know, there are side effects and complications possibly, but again, there's side effects and complications with anything like this, you know. The chemotherapy is a, a major thing. My operation is going to be a major, major operation. It's not a little operation. It's a big, 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 major, serious operation, you know. Hopefully with a robot doing it. It's obviously the precision is better with a robot. Hundreds of a millimetre, you know. But again, that's a bridge I'll cross when I come to it. At the minute. I need the chemotherapy side of it out the way first. Um, I've got to go for like a pre-assessment thing a few days before. And then, like I say, I start my chemotherapy uh, a week on Thursday. So 
was not on. I'm trying to get into a dentist as well at the minute. I need an emergency extraction. I'm not registered with a dentist. I've been registered with a dentist for years, and as most people know, to get registered now, especially in NHS, is nigh on impossible. Um, I need to start taking out just because it's it's a broken tooth anyway, just up here in the top. Um, it has flare-ups of abscess quite frequently. Well, obviously, if my immune system's at zero, the last thing my body's going to fight is a you know, an abscess infection, that then can lead, that's a real big major risk of sepsis there, so I need it done, I need it done within the next few days when it gives my jaw, and my gum, my time to heal up, hopefully I'll be able to get somewhere, I'm going to ring up tomorrow to find out about, um, you know, if I can get somewhere, otherwise then it's going to see if I can get into a private dentist and just pay for them to take it out, but you know, that, that's got to be done, because I don't want to, I don't want any more added complications to, all, to to the list of things I could possibly have as it is. Um, I don't, again, people coming up now saying that, you know, whether it's, it's even like mothers, like with the children, teenage and early, you know, 20s adults that have noticed things different with their body and have gone to the doctors about it, which is, you know, again, for me, that's, that's great, that's brilliant, that's good, it's because at least the message is getting across there now. You know, people are understanding that you know your body better than anybody else and if you know there's something wrong then you go and get it checked out and there's a lot of people I've spoke to now that are doing it over a friend of mine Pete I can't remember the name of the product um, let me see if I can find it it's it's just a urine testing kit for invisible blood traces I think which you know that's a cool idea because again you can't always see it you know mine unfortunately you could there was no denying mine was blood not in the slightest you know in your wildest dreams you could have never gone mm, I don't think there's anything wrong there yeah there was hugely something bloody wrong but unfortunately as most blokes seem to do just ignore it or pass it or push it to the back and go oh well it probably won't happen again um, here we go. That's my problem. Let right, me have a look, see if I can find what Pete. It was, um, it was something pretty cool, though, to be fair. It was something interesting, you know, something like I've never seen before. Ever. Right, it's called the uh, Echo Test, and it's a early warning system. Test for invisible traces of blood in your urine. And on the box it says it could save your life. Absolutely it could. 100% it could. Yeah. I don't know where you get it from if you type in it. So it's I-C-L-E. Test. Ickle test. But, you know. For something that might not be expensive to get. Could save your life. So, you know. That's a good idea. Something again. Something that you can do. Takes a couple of minutes of your time probably. The results are, I would expect, pretty instant. Worth doing. Um, obviously, now I'll let everybody. I think the next update now is going to be chemo day, day one of that, where I'll um, I try and get as much footage as I can. Again, I don't know what possible. A lot of hospital may say that they're not allowed phones in there, you know, you can't video it. Hopefully, not, but again, if so, maybe I'll try a stealth video. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Um, so that'll be my next one. Again, for everybody. If you think there's something wrong, get yourself checked out. Share and like the video as well. Get the message out there. Pass it on with as many people as possible. Because at the end of the day, if I can show you the way side of all this, you maybe you'll never have to go through it yourself. Um... So just again, a big thank you to everybody that's liked, subscribed, shared, and just passing on the information that I'm giving to people. So thank you very much indeed, and I'll see you with the next video.